The PlayStation Vita has a plethora of different games to play from different genres, from physical copies to the PlayStation Network. There's a lot of different and cool games to be played. In this list, we will cover the top 10 open world sandbox games currently available on the handheld. Once again, this list is in no particular order, not from worst to best, nothing like that. It's just essentially putting down, compiling the 10 favorite open world games that I've chosen for the PlayStation Vita. First on the list, we have Disney Infinity 2.0. First release on consoles, Disney Infinity received its first on-the-go experience on the PlayStation Vita. Disney Infinity 2.0 needs to be played alongside the wireless space where you can go ahead and play different Disney characters, which means different levels and missions to be completed in this open world. For example, when you're playing Spider-Man, the world is much more larger, being able to you know go from building to building and also be able to discover and do a lot of combats. Each character possesses a different element within the game. It's the first game on the PlayStation Vita that requires extra attachments to get the most out of the game, adding a new experience, but not necessarily one that really makes sense. Because when you think about it, it's a platform which you need to be carrying around everywhere you go and if you want to go ahead and add different characters and different levels you'll have to carry that base with you everywhere you go which essentially kind of defines the whole on-the-go experience but honestly it's a cool factor that Disney was able to go ahead and create this and be able to release it on the PlayStation Vita there's a lot of exploration a lot to do a lot of missions to be completed collecting different characters Disney familiar faces and stuff like that so it's a cool experience if you haven't tried it out the PlayStation Vita not might be the best, but it is an open world game, which is really cool. Next on the list, we have Gravity Rush. A very innovative and different experience, Gravity Rush is an action adventure game where you can control and alternate gravity through the motion sensing controls on the Vita. The game revolves a character by the name of Cat, where you can go ahead and explore the city of Hexville to discover more about yourself and the world around you. The open world elements comes from discovering the city through using the tilt sensing motions on the handheld. It's a personal favorite of mine and also one of the first games that had an open world sense of exploration when it first got released. Next on the list, we have Minecraft. While it is a sandbox, Minecraft still has the elements of an open world in terms of being able to give you freedom to do what you want with less limitations. In Minecraft, the main objective is to explore, survive, and build. Being able to explore underneath the dirt, finding new elements like diamonds, emeralds, and so much more, building skyscrapers, buildings, and traveling through sea, Minecraft is truly an open world slash sandbox game, which is why it remains the best game on the PlayStation Vita currently, which is quite impressive considering it's on all platforms. Next on the list, we have The Amazing Spider-Man. New York is a massive city, but you know what's better? Being able to explore it as Spider-Man. In this action-adventure game, you play as Spider-Man, giving you the ability to go ahead and explore New York City as, you guessed it, Spider-Man on the PlayStation Vita. From webbing, from building to building, to engaging in combat and competing side missions, The Amazing Spider-Man has a lot of content you can put hours upon hours on, which includes battling familiar villains and foes, but most importantly, being able to go ahead and explore the city of New York in the palm of your hands. It was one of those games that I overlooked and didn't really look forward to it until later on, but I played it and I'm like, whoa, this game is super cool. If you want me to do a small let's play or walkthrough of this game, make sure to crush the like button on this video. Next, we have the Jack and Daxter collection. While there's been rumors that Naughty Dog is working on the next Jack game, in the meantime, you can go ahead and enjoy the first alliterations of the series. Taking the first three Jack and Daxter games released on the PlayStation 2, this collection is a remaster edition bringing trophies and better graphics and frame rate, making it for an enjoyable experience. Furthermore, it's an open world game in a third person perspective where the player can explore a multitude of different areas as an open world environment and perform several attacks. If, you, if you've never played a Jack and Daxter game, then you have to get this collection. I played the Daxter game when I was on the PSP. It was a lot of fun. And once I got this for the PlayStation Vita, it was just so amazing. Just everything they packed in this game was just breathtaking. There's a lot of missions to do and you'll definitely have a lot of fun. Next on the list, we have Terraria. Classic Terraria game is a 2D action adventure sandbox game with some open world interpretation in terms of the game highlighting exploration as a major influence for the game. The graphic style is influenced by the Super NES with its 16-bit sprites adding a new vibe but also a retro one. The game in the past has been compared to Minecraft mainly due to its similarities of tools and exploration being a major highlight, but in Terraria you essentially you can go ahead and explore build and engage in combat from enemies and bosses, another game that will definitely sink you in for a lot of hours. You can go ahead and also have different skins, more customization as well, but it's just a cool kind of plethora of game. It is kind of more of a PlayStation Network title, but there's still a lot of exploration to be done in this game. Next on the list, we have Borderlands 2. Now, despite the small, which at times were kind of big, and kind of got in the way, frame rate issues and glitches, Borderlands 2 is a very well nice open world game on the PlayStation Vita. Borderlands 2 is an action role-playing first-person shooter. The gameplay revolves around the completion of missions and the collection of random generated loot, including weapons, shields, skins, among other cool items. You're located in the planet Pandora where the main goal is to take down anyone that tries to disturb the planet Pandora 
by also taking down the villain, Handsome Jack, which is, I don't know, that's a weird goofy name if you, read, if you ask me, but also gives you a better incentive to actually take him down. With secret gems to discover, endless amounts of enemies to take down, including mini and stage level bosses, there's a lot of exploration to be done in this open world landscape. Next we have the Sly Cooper series. The Sly series is an action adventure role playing game featuring the three classic Sly games from the PlayStation 2 where you play as Sly Cooper the mischievous raccoon with his sidekicks. You play in the Sly universe an open world which does have some linear sections within the levels. The game gives you a lot of exploration, detail when finding gems, doing daring heist and playing fun in addicting minigames. Blending thievery, combat exploration and stealth tactics in the Sly universe allows for a great time with a lot of gameplay to be done. Next we have Need for Speed Most Wanted. The Need for Speed franchise has made some open world racing games in the past and 2012's is nothing but that. The gameplay consists of completion of different types of races including time races, circuit races, speed runs and other forms to be engaged from exploring different sections within the Need for Speed world. By completing these type of races you'll earn in game currency in different types of cars which you can go ahead and compete and have a better advantage. Now the PlayStation Vita doesn't have a lot of racing games let alone any good racing games finding that Need for Speed Most Wanted was a really good port on the handheld and the fact that it still kept the open worldness of it was definitely something that I was not expecting but I'm really happy that it's included. And the last game on the list we have Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. This was the first AC spin-off game from the third installment of the series. Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation is an action adventure game that was among the first open world games released on the PlayStation Vita. This game is similar to the previous alliterations of the series. There is a lot of exploration, combat, climbing and discovery which also utilizes the rear touchpad, the touchscreen, the motions axis which takes full advantage of everything and every detail that the PlayStation Vita has to offer. If you're a fan of the AC series, you would definitely love to play this game on the go. Again, it's one of the first open world games that really got me excited and the future of the PlayStation Vita having more open world games. Now, there's a lot of games that the PlayStation Vita has that are open world. Kind of wish there were just a little bit more. Now this concludes the top open world and sandbox games available on the handheld. Once again this list is in no particular order from best to worst or worst to best. Make sure to comment your favorite PlayStation Vita game or a game you would like to play on the PlayStation Vita to get entered for my giveaway. Make sure to like this video, subscribe and follow me on my social medias, Twitter, Instagram or Facebook to see the winners. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.